Welcome to worship the second Sunday after Epiphany. Please join me in our call to worship. With God, all things are made new. We are made new creatures in Christ. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. We are made new creatures in Christ. The old things have passed away. We are made new creatures in Christ. Welcome to everyone to our worship for, again, this second Sunday after Epiphany. It is good that we are gathering for worship together. If uh, we were in person, I would invite the young people forward to sit next to me here, and um, we would have our children's time, but we're still going to have our children's time. One of my favorite things that I used to do was read a newspaper and especially the Sunday newspaper, right, that gets, gets delivered to your house. There's many sections, and uh, that was a fun Sunday activity. Now, I often read my newspaper on a device, either an iPad or computer or my phone, um, or I listen to the, the news and the radio as well. But did you know that the Bible is actually a lot like a newspaper? The Bible can actually be a lot like a newspaper. It gives us reports from moments in history and tells stories of things that happened a long time ago. So we are focusing on the marriage feast of Cana today. And what if we read that like it was a daily newspaper? an article that came in our mailbox or it came into our emails. We are going to imagine that we're reading an article from the Daily Galilean or perhaps the Jerusalem Times. And the headline is, Wedding Guest Turns Water Into Wine. That sounds like an interesting story and one that I'd like to attend 
But let's read the rest of the story. On Tuesday, a woman named Mary was in Cana to attend a wedding. A large number of guests, including her son, named Jesus, also attended the wedding. Guests at the wedding were reportedly having a great time until the host ran out of wine. At that point, it seemed that the happy celebration might turn into a disaster. Some of the wedding guests thought that per perhaps Jesus might have a solution to this problem. So they reported to him that they were out of wine. And when told about this problem, Jesus at first seemed unwilling to do anything to help. But after some encouragement from his mother, he finally agreed to help. Eyewitnesses at the wedding reported that Jesus noticed several large water jars nearby and instructed them to fill them with water. And after the jars had been filled with water, he told them to dump some of the water out of the jars and take it to the man in charge of serving the wine. When the wine steward tasted the water, he discovered it had been turned into wine. Wedding guests were amazed at the turn of events and said that the wine was the best, the very best that they had ever tasted. As a result of this miraculous event, many people are following Jesus everywhere he goes, and many believe that he might even be the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world. Well, that made for a pretty good news story, didn't it? Do you know what is really great about this story? Just as Jesus performed a miracle by changing water into wine at the wedding celebration more than 2,000 years ago, he is still working miracles in the hearts and lives of people today. And Jesus will work a miracle in you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, worker of miracles, work a miracle in us today. Amen. Thank you for listening. We will now sing our gathering hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall be no more termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you, and as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said, and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please pray with me? May the meditations of my heart and the words of my lips be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. And may you add a blessing of understanding to the hearing of this message today. Amen. Well, most of us probably have a memorable wedding story. It's likely to be your own or the one where the plan is perfect, but the execution left a little bit to be desired. 
The setting for my most memorable wedding was a golf course. More specifically, a golf course in Minnesota in a clear paneled tent so the guests would see the trees and the hills in the background as the couple said their wedding vows with the sun setting behind them. It was a great plan, except, except this wedding was in November in Minnesota. And it was cold and tense. Well, tents are a great thing, heated tents for wedding. That's a theory that remains to be proven for me. And just for the record, trolley cars on golf courses to give guests a nice little ride around sounds great, but their axles really are too wide for the paved golf carts, and they will get stuck in the snow and mud in November at a wedding in Minnesota. But in reality, it was a beautiful wedding, a bit cold, but beautiful. And the most memorable part of the wedding is that I had the privilege to officiate for my dear cousin as she married her beloved. In Jesus' day, wedding celebrations lasted a whole week. Everybody got the whole week off. The celebrations were like a long Sabbath with much thanksgiving for the blessing of God upon the couple and their family and their community. Wine was a central feature in the wedding and the feast celebrations. That's because wine was more than an intoxicating liquid to help them enjoy a week-long celebration. Wine had spiritual significance for Jewish partygoers. Spiritually, it served as a sign and symbol of the joy and blessing that flow from God's right hand into the hearts and lives of God's people. Wine and weddings were linked to hope for God's people. So when it looked as though they were going to run out, this wedding we are told about in John's Gospel was on the verge of becoming a familial embarrassment for the family and a bad sign for God's blessing of a joy and abundance as the happy couple were about to start their life together. One of the things that I want you to take away from today's sermon is that when Jesus is around food and wine, something holy is about to happen. Think about the stories of the gospel that you might be familiar with. Feasts were associated with healing or restoration to community and relationships. Like the feast the merciful father gave when his wandering son came home. Or when Jesus created a feast of five loaves and two fish that fed thousands. So feast plus wine plus Jesus equals holy is an equation that pretty much holds true throughout the Gospels. And here's how it goes in this story. Somehow Mary, the mother of Jesus, learned of this problem and she went to him and said, they have no more wine. Jesus says, woman. Now, there seems to be no tradition in Jesus' time for men addressing their mothers as woman. There is some precedence with non-family females, but not their mothers. So we're not quite sure why Jesus says this, except he is just beginning his ministry, and maybe he is dis distancing himself from the ties even the Son of God might have had to his mother. His choice of words is funny, irritating, unsettling, or perhaps other words that you would use to de describe your feelings at his use of the word woman when addressing his mother. It doesn't fit our picture of Jesus, really. And the evangelist doesn't give any details about Mary's reaction but with all the confidence in her son in the world, she says to the stewards, do what he tells you. 
So Jesus relents and instructs the stewards to fill the stone water jars with water and take some to the chief steward. And it's the best wine of the whole celebration. And the disciples believed in Jesus. The family reputation was saved and the blessings of abundance and joy flowed at the start of the couple's life together. From this sign, this miracle, we learn at least three things about God. First, food plus wine plus Jesus equals something holy is about to happen. Banquets signal the coming of God. And along with God comes the transformation of the world according to God's purpose. Second, God wishes to extravagantly and with abundance to give to the people that God loves. So much ab abundance, in fact, that it is almost scandalous. This new wine that Jesus made isn't just good enough. It's really good wine, the best. Third, the third thing we learn about God is that this gives us a clue to how God acts and where. God acts at the margins in ways that are both hidden and revealed. Not everyone at the party knew what Jesus did. At first, only Jesus, Mary, and the servants know. Somehow the disciples learn of it and believe in him, but we don't know how that happens. And we don't know the ways of God. And this is hard for us. We want to know, but God's ways are mysterious. But if God can be concerned that a couple in Cana have enough wine for their wedding, surely God is concerned about the big and small stuff of our lives. God is working on the many areas of this world that are broken. Today, where our society is fractured and hurting, where so much seems off, off, and calm, health, and peace seem far off, Jesus is with us. When there seems no way to end the violence, or when corrupt governments, economic conditions, drug or gang violence, and dreams of a better life force families to flee for their lives across borders, Jesus is getting ready to turn water into wine. In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. preached at the funerals of four young African-American girls killed while attending Sunday school at the 16th, 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Here is a little bit of what he said. These girls have something to say to every minister of the gospel who has remained silent behind the safe security of stained glass windows. They have something to say to every politician who has fed his constituents the stale bread of hatred and spoiled meat of racism. They have something to say to each of us, black and white alike, that we may substitute courage for caution. When these words seem just as relevant today as in 1963, Surely God is aching to shower us with the best food and drink there is. This gospel story is good news for us today because just as Jesus quietly and expertly transformed the water into an abundance of the best wine at the wedding at Cana, so too is Jesus working for a transformation of hearts and a reordering of society. In Jesus, God is bringing new wine to a fractured and hurting society where some are drunk on power and privilege and comfortable with a status quo. 
New wine is being brought to the meals, sometimes by a cupful and sometimes by the gallon. To some it tastes strange. Others, like the chief steward, wonder where this new wine comes from. But some, some people taste and know that God brings wine, brings change, and continues to transform the world so that all will be safe and welcome and are given a place at the wedding feast. Some are tired, tired of waiting, tired of working, tired of explaining. This story is good news for the weary, too, because Jesus is at the margins, quietly and expertly bending darkness and despair toward light and hope. In Jesus, God took on the religious establishment and the status quo, bringing grace and mercy to sinners, throwing a wide welcome to all people. And when his time had come, Jesus transformed the world by conquering sin and death and bringing the hope of a wedding feast above all wedding feasts to God's forgiven people where the wine and blessings of God never run out. May it be so. Amen. Just to-
the Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance so that we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day especially Agnes Grefsheim, those battling COVID, cancer, and other diseases, those recovering from surgery, and those we name out loud or silently in our hearts. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty all seeking shelter and all who seek peace. God of grace, hear our prayer. You see us for who we are and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen.
A couple of announcements before um, we do have our dismissal. Um, first, it is good to be back leading worship uh, with you all this week after a week of recovering and thank you for your prayers and all the support and to everyone um, for keeping us going uh, during this time. Secondly, a reminder that the congregational annual meeting is January 30th. Uh, the proposed 2022 spending plan is available in the weekly email for you to look at. And if you would like a paper copy, they are out on the bench next to the entrance doors. Uh, the poinsettias are still here and excited to be enjoyed elsewhere. If you have not had a chance to come by and get your poinsettia, please do so as soon as possible. Thank you to those who have contributed supplies or monetary donations for the newborn kits. Um, we will continue to take donations um, of the updated list of, of needs that's in the weekly email until we can safely gather to put those kits together, um, and hopefully in the not too distant future. Finally, our Dear Church book study has been postponed until we, are ab until we are able to gather in person again. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.